getting the adaptions into the beer is quite difficult. They don't taste very nice on their own. Um, they're quite bitter and they're not very water soluble and they denature at high temperatures. So getting the adaptions into the beer was a challenge. That guy's the founder of Collider Beer, a non-alcoholic beer that's stuffed with adaptogens, nootropics, and functional mushrooms. That sounds like a list of things you'd find in Super Mario Brothers, but they're types of substances that are said to reduce stress and boost memory. The three things we add are L-theanine, which is derived from green tea. It's that kind of relaxing, feeling you get after a cup of tea, but heightened. Lion's mane, which is a mushroom, so it's uh, probably the most studied functional mushroom. And then ashwagandha, which is uh, a root uh, from a kind of a Chinese uh, plant. While alcoholic beverages have long been used by people to let loose their inhibitions in social situations, Collider is a non-alcoholic beer that's considered a functional drink. Functional drinks are kind of a new beverage industry buzzword, and it's not to suggest all other drinks serve no function. After all, water hydrates your body, milk reminds you of what a cow tastes like, and soda helps keep your dentist in business. For me, it's a drink that does something. So that could be for health, uh, it could be for a more short-term immediate effect. So we are all very familiar with functional drinks when you think about it, tea, coffee, alcohol. That's the co-founder of Three Spirit, a non-alcoholic spirit company with products said to enhance your night before, during, and after the party. But I think there's a more modern kind of push for ingredients that might give you energy without caffeine or some health benefits, whether that's things that are full of vitamins or amino acids. And then there's this kind of new playing field of ingredients or products that use things like adaptogens and nootropics, which we try and utilize. Across this three pack of their products, one promises to make you feel primed, fiery, and energized, another elevated, calm, and connected, and one that says it'll make you feel mellow, dreamy, and soothed. We definitely identified these three core kind of state changes that people want from alcohol. And that's, you know, to simplify it, things that can stimulate you, you know, pick me up after a long day, something that can act as a bit of a social lubricant and something that can be more of a relaxant. So we feel like we cover those three bases with our product range. It's a roller coaster of feelings and emotions intended to help you pick a beverage to match your mood, serve as a pick-me-up, or just a social lubricant. Without a hangover so bad, it inspires two sequels. Fundamentally, alcohol is like the ultimate functional drink. People drink not just for flavor, it's clearly for multiple reasons, but it helps people socialize and helps people unwind, helps people perk up. So we thought we could do that really well by coming at Non-Alk from a new angle. Non-Alk, of course, is having a bit of a moment these days. From mocktails to liquorless liquor stores, one drinks market analysis company estimates the low and no alcoholic drink market is worth more than $13 billion today and is expected to grow 6% between now and 2027. Last May, a market research company found that around four in 10 Americans follow a sober curious lifestyle. A way to see what life is like without alcohol. Kind of in the vein of dry January, sober October, or your neighborhood bartender's sorry, I'm tired of making espresso martinis Saturday night. The idea of abstaining from alcohol, of course, isn't new. Just ask our two leading presidential candidates. But this particular movement recently took off thanks in part to a book called, well, Sober Curious, which wonders how different your life would be if you stopped drinking on autopilot. Not only is that worthy advice for pilots themselves, but it's one of the reasons that adult-focused, non-alcoholic beverages have been filling up beer caves and Collins glasses across the country. More people are entering the sector. Um and actually that's largely driven by younger consumers. This person runs an online non-alcoholic drink store and her observations are indeed backed up by some recent research. A 2018 report from Berenberg Research found that Gen Z respondents in their early teens and 20s were drinking 20% less than millennials when they were the same age. And one 2020 academic study found that between 2000 and 2018, the number of college students that said they abstained from alcohol rose from 20 to 28%. And yeah, our, our branding and our marketing is aimed at a younger generation. It's kind of 18 to, to 44, I'd, I'd say, but, but tending, kind of leaning towards the, the younger side of that. Um, because that is where the market is, um, because people are, because Gen Z are drinking a lot less, younger millennials are drinking a lot less. They're turning into going out socialising, you know, and their form of socialising isn't, you know, driven around bars, pubs, nightclubs like ours used to be. It's more experiential, but also that the drinking side of it isn't alcohol based. And up until now, it's been about making something that tastes like alcohol. We're trying to 
give a credible alternative that feels like alcohol as well. With the growing popularity of mocktails and NA bevs, it should come as no surprise that people looking to imbibe on an adult beverage without the alcohol are still seeking complex flavors and experiences that are a bit more elevated than that of the lonely bottle of O'Doul's in the back of the cooler. People are looking for something that feels special, premium, worth sipping. They don't want to completely lose um, the ritual of having some indulgence. Some fresh styles again. The palates and the preference of the people have changed, so you can you need to give them a, a, a good selection. That's the bar manager at Nomad London, a place that features everything from a vodka-based tomato martini to craft soft cocktails like a non-alcoholic Manhattan and Paloma, who observes that there's still plenty for bartenders to do with these non-alcoholic cocktails. People have started to develop their own personal flavor, and you won't get away with just given one option, they want to have, have a selection and they want to choose and they want to explore it and you know, it's, it's fun for us as well. With the non-alcoholic share of the entire actual alcoholic beverage market predicted to reach 4% by 2027, it's quite possible that a double lion's mane and soda might be the drink of choice powering your future functional night out. But hey, in case you're truly looking for a good time without the headache the next morning, Subscribe to At The News Refresh on YouTube for more weird and interesting news stories each and every day. Cheers.